how to discern the truth from feelings. How to discern the truth from feelings. And I'm, I'm going to go in a, a, in a very practical sense, and y'all are going to woo, j- be jumping off your chairs. I give you guys permission in this hour to do it if the Holy Spirit leads you. But make sure it's from the Holy Spirit, not your feelings. Okay. I might give permission, but did God give permission? Number one, on how to discern the truth from feelings. Let me just give you all this before I read this. You have to start off with loving the truth. You have to love the truth. Okay? Love the truth. Like, if you love truth, okay, we're on a good path. Because some of y'all love love your lies more than the truth. Some of y'all love your truth. They love their truth versus the truth. You cannot do that. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's going to be hard to discern my feelings from the truth when I can't even love the truth. Start loving the truth or a strong delusion will come upon you. Okay, that's what 2 Thessalonians is. If I don't love truth, there is an open door for strong delusion to come into my mind. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 30 years. There is a point for strong delusion to come in your mind if you don't love truth. This is real. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, all signs, and all lying wonders. He is a liar when it comes to power, to signs, and even wonders. Verse 10, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they may be, that might, be, that might be saved. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Okay, now there's always a question, why does God send a strong delusion? I'm going to read verse 10 again. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. It is actually a a spirit of delusion that gets sent. It's not that God wants to send this. It's because you haven't committed yourself to him to love truth, and that is why you become blind. It's actually the reason why God sends it. It's, It's his wrath. It's part of the wrath of God for us not loving truth. So if you don't love truth, what else do you love? If you don't love the way, the truth, The life, if you don't love truth, what else are you loving? Because it's either one or the other. Darkness, light. Holy, unholy. Right? So we got to love truth. Love truth or a strong delusion gets sent your way. And this is why people that can't, can't get into discipleship, they don't like correction. In fact, if you don't like correction, you don't like discipleship. Because to be discipled is to get discipled from a teacher. You can't have disciple without discipline. So there's this level of discipline that I need. But I'm going to tell you, if y'all love truth, welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the king of glory. Welcome to living a life where you're going to be able to lead your children, your family, your coworkers, friends, everybody around you growing up into a better way. And it might not be you directly, but it could just at least be a reflection of the fruits that you carry. Love truth. That's number one. Love truth. Go to Romans. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. So we're we're talking about how to discern truth from feelings. Number one, very simple. Start off with loving the truth. We love truth up in here, even though it stings. Even though God's word is active and living like a two-edged sword, right? It, it, It pierces the joints, the marrows, the soul, and the spirit. Even though his truth may pierce joints, marrow, soul, and spirit, it cuts deep, but it cuts things off in my life. There's this saying that if they're trying to separate me from God, thank God that he separated me from them. Like I'm getting separated from them because they're separating me from him. 
right? The cutoff isn't personal, it's spiritual. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18. So number two, how to discern truth from feelings. How to discern truth from feelings. Number two is when the truth sounds like hate. When the truth sounds like hate, what does that mean? means when the truth comes your way and it sounds like it's attacking you, right? Or it's, 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 it's coming against your agenda. You ever get those people that like the truth is right in front of them and they're like, they're offended because it's, it's true, but they love their lies more than the truth. So they're like, why are you saying that to me? God so loved the world that he gave his, oh, you're hating on me. You're hating on my beliefs. When the truth sounds like hate. There's a saying that the truth sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. So the, the truth sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. So how can I discern the difference between feelings and the truth when, when it sounds like hate? Right? In my life. Meaning offense is right there. In Romans chapter 1 verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Right here who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. This is kind of like in the book of Timothy, right? Where it says in the last days, people, men will be lovers of themselves, blasphemers, unholy, unthankful, ungrateful, disobedient to their parents, lovers of pleasure versus ra rather than lovers of God. What does that mean? These guys that suppress the truth with unrighteousness, they love their sin, they are lovers of pleasure, Versus, versus lovers of God. So they suppress their pleasure of loving pleasure more than loving God with what? Unrighteousness. And that's why they love their sin. Now, there's some of these people that are broken, that have trauma issues, right? That are hurt, that are in pain. And we see that they suppress their hurt with what? Unrighteousness. Like the Hennessy ain't gonna help you. The weed's not going to help you. This stuff is not going to help a heart that has a hole that came from a devil that you allowed to enter with and you opened your legs with. This is real. Okay? This is exactly what people go through. Now they suppress the truth with unrighteousness. So I'm not saying every single one of these people that do it, they're bad, you know, like throw them out of here. It's like, no, I, now I need to know how to help them because... They're suppressing the truth with unrighteous behavior, taking shots, going out, clubbing, but can't come to church, right? It's like they're, they're looking for these desires. They're hungering and thirsting for things that are in this world. Now, are we going to condemn them from the corner? Of course not. But we're going to know how to help them, and we're going to understand why they're going through what they're going through and why they believe and why they're doing what they're doing right here. This is the Bible coming to life. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. How to discern the truth from the feelings when the truth sounds like hate. So you're going to see these people that are going to try to suppress it with unrighteousness. They're going to try to mask it out, right? And you just know. Number three, Discern patterns. Now, I'm going to go deeper on this. I got a qu couple questions to ask, y'all. If you can't write it down, we'll have the recording, or you guys can ask after service. Discern patterns. The first one, do they open up their Bible more than they open your doors? Do they open up their Bible more than they open your door? Because they can look like a person that loves to open doors for you. This can be in a relationship-wise, right? But do they actually open up their Bible? Because just because it's a good example or a good thing, it's not always a God thing. Another question you want to ask. Do they pray for you more than they pay the food for you? Because it might be a knight in shining armor, uh, uh, right? A knight in shining armor coming up. But are they covered in the armor of God? I got to discern. These are, I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly just, I'm, I'm exposing patterns. So we know the difference between truth and feelings. Because feelings is when they pay for my food. Oh, they did it. 
but do they pray for your food and do they pray for you? Here's another one. Do they guide you towards God, not away? Do they guide you towards God, not away? And again, I'm not saying to cut off from these people. Sometimes your position for, from people that are guiding you away, they just don't influence you. You should be influencing them towards God. So I got to know my position and my authority. And that's what, that's what I think intimacy with God breeds. There's this saying that intim intimacy with God, it erases insecurity and it breeds authority. Because sometimes when we're not as intimate with God, we start to bow down to other people because of our insecurity. But when I'm intimate with him, when I know who I am in Christ, when I know whose I am, it erases all the insecurity washed, dipped by the blood of Jesus, and, and it replaces that insecurity with authority in Christ Jesus as a child of God. Do they take you to church versus saying, I'm too spiritual to go to church? You ever get those people who are like, I'm good, I'm, I'm, super, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual enough, like I, we don't need to go. We have the Bible, right? We pray. <laughs> It's another question to ask yourself. Do they take you to church versus saying, I'm too spiritual to be in church? Community is everything. Ministry is community. Ministry is community. Another question, do they respect your purity? Do they respect your purity? I just did another teaching this last week. Um, I'm going to, hey, Eric, can you uh, check? I think there's like a, something going on next door. Please, thank you. Yeah, I just saw something. I was like, I think there's somebody. Do they respect your purity? Purity is what? To, to be pure, it means to be free from corrupt desires. Free from corrupt desires. So when your heart is not as pure, again, self, my own selfish ambitions, my own ways can be corrupt, Right? Our ways, our desires can be corrupt. But to be made pure is to be free from corrupt desires. It, it means to cleanse, to cleanse, right? Some of us need to cleanse our hearts. We talked about that last service is, is to really cleanse your heart and to be free from corrupt desires. Like, I don't, know, I don't want what I want. I want what God wants. And can I just tell you all, that's kind of tough sometimes. You know, I ministered to a few uh, couples, right? And it's hard to discern the difference between the spirit of God and emotions. They can almost look the same. And here, can I just tell y'all, you can't control emotions. It's hard to control emotions. But I can purify them because you can purify your soul, your mind, your will. You can, you can restore them. But it's hard. When emotions are along the line, you know, you get that butterfly tickling feeling. Y'all ever got that chase where you like you had a crush on somebody? Like we all love the chase, right? You'll do anything. You'll, 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 you'll cancel everything. You'll do whatever it takes. Like everything becomes inconvenient if it's not pursuing that. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. The butterfly face. So my question is, do they respect your purity? Do they truly respect your purity? Another question. After you argue, do they go after God or do they open up the dating app? Right? After you argue. Are they always looking for other options or do they go to God before what just took place? Discerning truth from feelings. Because it's easy to wandrously scroll and say, I got other options. I got other. There's a, a whole bunch of other things on the menu anyways. Right? What, what, everything I'm talking about right now, discern patterns. These are patterns that people have. Now, are, are there going to be times where they might do it? Maybe. Emotions are high. Anger, right? Rage. That stuff is real. But discerning patterns. And then my, my next thing is, are they willing to even get better? Because some people, if they did that the past season, do not label them as that in this season. If they're willing to change. If it's covered by the blood of Jesus. Last question to ask yourself on discerning patterns. Do they truly love Jesus? 
Because this will also test to see if these people really love Jesus. The way that they operate, the way that their habits develop. Like me, I'm trying to get better. I know as a minister, as a person that loves Jesus, that loves God, that I will humble myself to know that, hey, sometimes I need a daily devotional that I can open up. That I'm not perfect. That I need to read the word, but I also need structure in some areas of my life. There's a part of my life in this next season that I want to get better in my life. So guess what I did? I bought a devotional around that thing. Because I know that I can get better and God can challenge me to become better in that area of my life. So I love Jesus, but I'm also willing to get better because I love Jesus, okay? And I never want us to think that we're ever better than, and again, this can come into context with a, a context to a significant other or a bestie or a friend, right? This can go into so many contexts. I discern their patterns. Like what is the pattern on how they respond based on certain situations? Like again, your friend might always be buying food from you, so you feel like you owe them. And then when they tell you to come out with them on a Friday night because you've bought over $100 worth of food for them in the last couple of weeks, you're going to feel like you're in depth with them. But God doesn't want you to go out there, right? So I have to also know how to build boundaries. Like, hey, you keep paying for my food, but you're, now you're using that to build something up so that you can, you can come with the ask. And you can ask me to bring me somewhere where I'm not called to be. So we, we tend to feel guilty. We st tend to feel maybe a little bit of shame because we don't do that stuff for others because they do so much for us just because it's good, right? Is it God? Three ways on how to discern truth from feelings. Start off with loving the truth. That's number one. Number two, discern. you can discern it when the truth starts to sound like hate. Meaning, is this a spiritual attack over my life? And it's okay, y'all. There's times where I thought I was right about something and I got wrecked by God. Is that okay to say? Like, God wrecks it because his, his way is the best way? That's okay. Okay? That, that's okay. We're, we're, we live in a, in a generation where we become so insensitive to things. Like, if you challenge me my, and my beliefs, I'm, I'm canceling you. Right? Like, you, we're not friends anymore. And I made it Facebook official, Instagram official. We ain't friends anymore. I even blocked you. I don't even want to talk to you. You ever get so mad at somebody that you just block them? Right? Because you got challenged. For me, it's, it's hard to block people that are always commenting on my stuff. Like, everything you have to say, they have something to say against you. There was this one person I was truly going to block, and then the Holy Spirit, I believe the Holy Spirit told me, just let them do what they're doing. One day, they're going to come to, come to Christ. And it's so funny, two years later, this person comes to Christ. This was like, this was during the pandemic, right? During that time. And they were always just talking. They were always saying, they were always saying stuff about my beliefs. And then now they're in my comment section cheering me on. A couple years later, almost blocked them. But we get so mad. We get so angry, right? Like, so if you're challenging, right? What if the Holy Spirit's there to say, because sometimes we're always like, no, I'm filled. I'm a man of God. I just came from church. I'm ready. I'm, I'm filled up. And then we start blocking people and start doing all. Because we think we're really empowered by the Holy Spirit. What if the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is holding on and just saying, just don't, don't hit the block button. Don't send that text. Don't respond to them right now. I know you're fired up from God and coming out of church, but you don't need to send that text right now. Just wait on it. Meditate on your response. Then the last thing is number three discern patterns discern patterns I, I feel led to close in john 1 new testament john chapter 1 i just want to close on this in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god i think what i'm going to be talking about because we're talking about discernment uh next week we're only going to have one service which is uh, a 9 a.m service okay so we're not going to have our second service for the last Sunday of January. We're only going to be doing one service next week. Okay. 9 a.m. And the Lord has really been sharing on like how to really sharpen, how to sharp, how, how do we sharpen this discernment? Because we've been talking a lot about discernment, discernment, discernment. Today, you can't have discernment without the Holy Spirit. You just cannot. 
There's too much noise out there. There's too much voices out there. There's too much of these lies. That are, there's just way too much of that going on. There's, there's AI. There's a lot of deception that's just going on out there that's trying to deceive us as individuals. Like just because you saw it on the news, just because you saw it on somebody's social. Like there's things I posted and then I'm like, man, that was a lie. Delete, right? It's like, and I, I, you get checked for this stuff because only the Holy Spirit can reveal these things to you. The enemy is so good at making things look like it's truth, look like it's from God. He's really, really good at that. I'm closing out in John chapter 1, verse 14. Because verse 1, in the, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But in verse 14, actually, let's go to verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. We never want to be under the will of flesh which is the will of self, and we never want to be under the will of man. Okay? Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. What does that mean? That means that the more of the Word you have in you, Get so full of the word of God that that's the only thing you can respond with is the word of God. But when the word, if the word can become flesh, and I know this talks about Jesus, but Jesus was also a human, right? 100% man, 100% God. Jesus, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and full of truth. That also means we can also be the living word. The word of God can become flesh through you. You live it. The only, the only Bible that anybody's ever going to read is you sometimes, right? And that's, that's the power of being able to understand, okay, I got discernment. I got the Holy Spirit. I got his word. But how do I move in the marketplace? How do I really move? We did a teaching uh, Saturday about like really being effective as marketplace ministers. We just taught about it yesterday, right? How to be an effective marketplace minister, the different types of spheres of influence and, and how to really go, go about from the city to the crowd, to the church, to the core. We really talked about these, these things because we have to understand what environment we're in. Like this is real spiritual maturity, y'all. Spiritual maturity that the world cannot receive. Like maturity and wisdom is not how many years you, you've gone around the sun, right? Spiritual maturity can only come from God. Spiritual wisdom can only come from Him. And it's, a lot of it is how much time you spend with Him. Majority of the time, you can discern if you really got the Spirit because Spirit knows Spirit. So majority of the time, when I'm talking to people, you could tell if somebody's really spending with, time with God in this season. I'm not talking about your fasting. I know you were on fire that past season. I know you were fasting like never before and you were like floating on water, right? Walking on water. I know that season three years ago, but how about this season today? How about in this season? The Bible tells us to be ready in and out of season. Discernment, discernment, discernment. We'll talk in these next few weeks as the Lord leads, we'll talk about how to really sharpen it, how to get sharp in the spirit and that that teaching some of us might not like it let me not let me, let me rephrase this some of our flesh might not like it okay because the flesh hates what the spirit is doing they are warring against one another they are battling against one another so some of our flesh might not like to get sharpened in the spirit and it's okay because those that are walking in the spirit will offend those that are walking in the flesh. There will always be that offense that comes. But I know in this here, in this house here, we love truth. Yeah. We love God. It's okay to get sharpened. It's okay to get refined. It's okay. It's better than walking dull in wilderness for 40 years. I'd rather get sharp right now and only have two weeks of going through my wilderness so I can launch into promise. That's what the sharpening is in taking place. It's letting go of the old 
and allowing the brand new. Yes, your, your new life will cost your old one. It will. Closing out, if you guys want to walk through doors, this, who's, everyone's prophesying about open doors. Literally, every believer I talk, I've been talking to like a different believer every day. Everyone's like, Pastor, it's the year of the open doors, right? It's these people from like all around the, the, <laughs> the nation. I'm like, yes, amen. It is a year of open door. But it's going to be hard to open that door when you don't have a key. And the keys of the kingdom, we talked about these in our kingdom series on like the, the keys of what? Prayer, fasting. Okay, we talk about obedience. We just talked about it. Righteousness, hungering for righteousness. These are the keys that gives us access to the doors that come from the kingdom. So that's what we're teaching, right? It's like, yeah, I received the open door blessing. Okay, I, I, I do want to receive it, but I will never receive a door that is locked and closed when I can't fast my way to opening it. Like fasting is not just because it's a new year. Y'all know that, right? I get it. Everyone's fasting. I think actually it's great. It's when, when a lot of churches are opening up to fast for the new year, I actually love that because it's an encouragement for people that are already willing to change. It's for the, you know, the, the, the January goers that everyone, everyone's at the gym. It's the, it's the best thing. To bring something new because it's a brand new year. So, so I, I, I honor that. I, 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 put, I put hands to just, to just bless that because it, it encourages people. But fasting is a lifestyle, family. It is a lifestyle on and, and how God wants us to fast. Okay? Knowing everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to have their different seasons. Everyone's going to have their own personal convictions. I pray the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts. And can I just say conviction doesn't feel good? Conviction is never meant to feel good. But conviction is good news that you have the Holy Spirit. So if you are being convicted in your heart, it means you have the Holy Spirit. Don't feel shameful. Don't feel guilty. Some people feel so guilty and shameful because they, they're like, I'm getting convicted, right? And it's like, good. It means the Holy Spirit is with you and in you. I pray that we know the Holy Spirit. Do they, do they know the Holy Spirit? The people that are giving us advice, do they know the Holy Spirit? I know they just came back from church, but do they know the Holy Spirit? I know that they open up their Bible and they, they post Bible verses on Facebook every day, but do they know the Holy Spirit? Let me go deeper. Do they know the Holy Spirit in their life today? Because they're operating off a past fast life, a past prayer life, a past revelation that they're carrying today. Do they know the Holy Spirit today? 